This is Casey at Quadricopter. Um, I was just going to walk you through exactly how to solder one of these extension PCB boards. I know a lot of people have been having trouble with it, um, so I'm going to walk you through it uh, relatively slowly here and the best we can. Um, a lot of the pieces are really small, so bear with us if you can't see it. Um, jump on the Microcopter website and they show a schematic of all this stuff. Um, to do this, we're going to need our soldering pen um, and some tweezers are extremely useful. Um, if not, some needle nose pliers will help. Uh, but you definitely want these and some wire strippers will also probably be required. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is solder on the big stuff. Um, makes it a little easier, give you a little practice and uh, I haven't eaten lunch today so my hands are going to be pretty shaky so I'll try and ignore that. Um, the first thing we do is tack this down by soldering one of the smaller pieces. Um, that usually makes it easiest. Um, if you're wondering which of these to use on the top, um, there's actually three of these that all kind of look the same. We're going to use the only one that's uh, got markings that are different than the other. Um, those other two will go on the back side. So we're going to go ahead and solder this on. Um, and it can be extremely challenging. Um, so you definitely need some patience when doing it. Um, the easiest way is to get a little bit of a um, little bit of solder on that pad, which we've got there and then slowly move that in on top of the pad once it's heated up. And it doesn't have to be perfect at first. Um, we can go back and fix that now that it's tacked down. Um, we're gonna do the other pads um, and that'll just keep it from moving around on us. So that part's done. I'm gonna go ahead and solder this whole side over here. And the easiest way is to get it kind of at an angle so you're heating up um, all those pads at once and then you're gonna add solder to it. So now that's good. Now that it's held down by those other solder points, we can go ahead and fix that first solder we've got. Um, now we can see that's all done. Um, pretty easy to do. Now we're gonna move on to one of the smaller pieces here. And it's gonna be this right here. Um, probably can't see it very well. Um, it's just a little uh, tan colored piece with silver tabs on each side and that's going to go right here. Um, so again the easiest way to do it is to add a little bit of a solder pad and once we've got that we're going to pick it up with our tweezers, heat that pad up and set it down into place and remove the heat and so now it's held down and we can turn it around here and solder the other side. You want to be really careful not to get this too hot while you're doing it. You kind of want to be quick. Otherwise, it can actually transfer the heat to the other side and cause it all to move. Um, and once you get solder on both sides, it, it becomes a, a whole nother headache to fix. Um, all right. So now that that's done, we can move on again. Um, now we're going to move on to the other one of those. So the other little tan piece is going to go right down here where it says C6. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a little bit of solder to the pad. And be careful not to squeeze these too hard with the tweezers. Um, Otherwise, they can shoot out, and when you lose that on the carpet, it will be gone for eternity. Um, and you'll have to order more, so it's best to be careful with that. Um, so now we're going to solder the other side again, like we did before. All right, there we go. And now we're going to do the resistors. So that's these right here. They are numbered. Um, you don't really have to pay attention to it. They're both the same. Um, and they're going to go on the R4 and R5 spots. Um, so we're going to turn the board like this and do the same thing as before. And I'm actually going to do them both at the same time here. Um, so we're going to add solder to both of those pads. And pick it up. Go ahead and do the other one. Now we're going to flip them both around. And 
Now you probably can't see it, but those first solder points I did, since it was so quick, they've actually got um, what we call the cold solder. Um, so what we're gonna do is heat those back up and add a little tiny bit of solder to them again and make sure they're nice and shiny. Um, not because they look better, but because that means they will conduct electricity better. Um, next, we're gonna move on to the LEDs. And there's one really important thing you need to keep in mind on these LEDs, and that they are um, really hard to tell the direction of. Um, so what we wanna do is if you look, and you probably can't see it on the video, um, but there's actually a little green band on one side. Um, on this side, it's right now on the right side right here. Um, and as you move it back and forth, it makes it a little easier to see. Um, so we're gonna solder this on, and we're gonna make sure that green band is up to the right side here. Um, so furthest away from all these pads on the other side. So I'm gonna do the same, as, same thing as before, heat one side up, um, and the other one is actually gonna go right under it, so I'm gonna do it at the same time as well. plant it on there. And these you have to be even more careful than the other ones um, to not get them too hot uh, because it can melt that little diode in there um, and then it won't work. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and solder the other side of it and then touch up the first side. And so that one's all done. Now I'm going to move on to the next one. And don't forget, again, they are directional. So now that's done. Um, so now we're actually gonna flip over to the other side really quick um, and finish up these. So um, now we've got these two little pieces to solder on. Um, we're gonna do them just like those first ones. And I'm gonna cut some solder off here. Um, so I'm just gonna throw some solder on these smaller pads. That'll make them easier to place. Put a little weight on this to keep it from moving around. All right, now I can touch up the other sides to this. And then go back and fix that first one I did. Solder on the second one. Do the same as before here. Now we've got this little guy here. It can be pretty tricky because there's actually four little arms um, that need to get soldered onto these four pads. So the positioning is the hard part once we've actually got the first one, um, the first arm kind of tacked down, it's a lot easier. Um, it's just a matter of getting all four of those arms on all four pads uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, and I believe these are directional, um, so you do have to be careful of that. Um, if you take this and turn it in the orientation I've got, um, you want to make sure the text is right side up on this. Um, so let's see here. So we're going to put it on right like that. Um, and there's also, if you look, there's a little dot in the upper left corner. Um, and we want it oriented as such. You can see there's a little dot on the board um, that matches up with that. So we're going to go ahead and heat that little pad up and hopefully place this right the first time. So we can kind of scoot that over just a little bit and bend that arm. 
Um, all right, so now I've got each arm touching each pad, um, and we don't want any of them crossing over uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so now that that's done, we can go around and solder each arm down. And touch up that first solder a little bit. And that's all the small stuff. Um, so at this point, we have a little bit of a choice to make. Um, you can actually install a little 12 volt or 5 volt uh, voltage regulator on this board. So if you're going to install any external things uh, such as downlinks, um, transmitters, anything like that, you can actually power them off this board. Um, in this case, we're actually not going to. So what we need to do is bridge this point and this point together. Um, so we're actually not going to step the voltage down. We're not going to do that right now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a little jumper to go between the two. So um, I'm just going to use a little bit of this silicon wire just because it is included in the kit. Um, I recommend using silver wire. It can make it a little easier to position and bend it around. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and grab some wire cutters. Um, and my wire cutters are getting pretty dull here, so it's not going to be as clean as I would like but I'll kind of show you what to do. All right, so what I did is I just made a little piece of wire and I stripped both sides off of it. Um, and now it's easiest if you've got uh, what we call a little helping hands um, so we can actually put them in there and it'll hold that wire down. And we're gonna tin each side of the, uh, the wire here We're going to make sure the whole side of that is covered and we're going to go around and do the same on the other side here. And now we're going to tin the spots where we're going to actually solder this to. So we're going to do the opposite ends of the, the set of three here. So we're going to add some solder to this one here and this one here. Now this is the kind of tricky part. Um, it's easiest if you've got these helping hands because you can just kind of clamp this in here. If you don't, um, you can actually just take and set the um, arm of uh, your pliers or anything like that just to hold this down. Otherwise, it'll try and move around later on. Um, so I'm actually just going to put in my helping hands here and kind of clamp it down, um, being careful not to um, kind of crush any of these little resistors or anything like that. Um, so now I'm going to solder one side of this on. Once that's soldered on, um, we're actually going to bend this into a loop over to the other side. Now, the smaller you can make this loop, the better, um, just because it will have a cleaner look. Um, but it is easier the longer it is. So um, it's kind of up to you. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to see in the video, but I'm just going to bend that around and solder it down on that opposite pad. And that's really all you need to do. Um, now, um, it's just kind of uh, a bit of regular soldering that needs to be done. Um, so the only thing that needs to be put on now is the wires, um, which are these right here. So you've got your servo in and you've got your power in. Um, so we're going to start with servo in because that one's kind of the more challenging one. Um, again, helping hands is the easiest way to do this um, to kind of hold it in one spot, but you can hold it down with just about anything. Um, so I'm going to add solder to the J6 the five volt and J7 pads. Um, and that's where our servo is going to go, or servo wire, sorry. Um, and these actually come pre-tinned, which can be kind of nice. Um, sometimes I like to redo it just because um, using the same solder that you use um, on the connection and the tinning um, can be really helpful. Sometimes if it's different solder, it can make kind of a pain. Um, so in this, we want to make sure that red wire is in the middle where it says 5 volt and our ground is actually going to be on the right side. Um, and it's easiest if you take and sort of bend those ones away to start. Um, and then we're going to solder this uh, signal wire down. 
And now we're going to get the 5 volt tacked down and then the ground wire tacked down. Um, and now it's a good idea to go back and fix those if it's, you know, kind of a cold solder, if it's not all the way on. Um, you do have to be careful because that wire will shift around a little as you go. Um, so you definitely want to be careful it doesn't bridge over to the next pad. All right, so that's done. Now we've just got to do the volt in, um, and this is where it's going to draw its power. Um, if you're powering lights um, or anything else you want to control, this is how it's going to pull its power. Um, so we're just going to take this red and black wire um, and remove the sheathing on both sides. And we're going to do like we did before, where we tin the ends of the wires. Uh, makes it a lot easier when you actually go to solder it. Um, a little more solder here. Now that those are tinned, let me go ahead and put this back in. Now they're going to get soldered on the pads right next to it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put some solder on both of those pads. Now what we're going to do is um, actually solder them on. So we're going to start with the red one here, um, just because otherwise it will be in our way when we go to solder the ground. Um, so it's going to get soldered on right next to the ground of that servo wire or servo uh, plug we just wired on there. Um, so there we go. And now we're going to solder the black one on ground. All right, and that's about all we need to do. Um, if you're if you, at any point you forget where any of these go, if you just jump on the Microcopter website, you can actually see a, a layout and a diagram of where each one goes. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to actually read it. You know, it's not that complicated. It's just a picture of where each thing goes. Um, but that's about it. So it's actually pretty easy. Uh, it just takes a little bit of patience. Um, so this is Casey at Quadrocopter again. Thanks for watching.